Hi everybody, I'm Captain Floofers, and welcome back to LEGO Dimensions. Now, when we last left off, uh, we cleared out uh, the um, Midway Arcade level pack. And um, we're out of levels to play through in a story mode-like fashion now. So, the next step in our little adventure here is that we're going to basically take everything else that I need from version 1.0 and just build it. Uh, and then we're going to start uh, going through um, the levels again to try to get 100% in them. And then we're going to start focusing more on doing the uh, free roam areas uh, for each of the franchises that are here. So uh, I don't know how long this will take, so I don't know how worried I should be about battery life from the camera or, um, I guess, space left in storage for the camera. I don't think it'll be that super bad, but we'll have to see, because there's still a lot of stuff to go through. Now, I'm going to be actually kind of changing the camera angle here, because I noticed a lot with the Midway one. Uh, I had been kind of ducking out of, out of frame, because I resorted to dumping all of the pieces out on the table in front of me. And it's kind of a, a good, good size space between me and the table. So I think for uh, I, I think I, I, it'll do better to go ahead and change the camera angle on that. So uh, two seconds, I'm gonna jump cut over to that. Okay, so my uh, voice should be picking up okay on the microphone. I'm gonna tilt the screen up here a bit so it's a little bit easier to see because it's not exactly in my field of view. But here's where we're gonna be working. I'm just gonna move a few of these things out of the way. Um, and apologies for the uh, the portal here. It does constantly um, shine like this, so I, I apologize if this like foots is about with the uh, with the um, with the camera's like white balancing or something. It doesn't seem to be doing too much in that regard. So hopefully that'll be okay. But I do need this active uh, so I can read the instructions on the screen as they happen. I'm actually gonna move some other stuff here put my controller up here so I can kind of cycle through that. Now, I'm going to be getting these, let's, let's I've got a, my little drawer here. Let's get this out of the way because that was the midway thing. We already did that. So I'm going to be doing the couple boxes first because they're the bulkier ones. So this is um, the box for a fun pack, which, um, as I described, come with one character. Uh, in this case, this is the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz, and whatever item or vehicle that that, that accompany them, or which is which is the which is um, uh, associated with that character. Uh, and for me, and from here on out, um, unlike the level pack characters who had two items or vehicles associated with them, uh, each of these characters is only going to have one thing. So that'll actually help us out quite a bit. I need to just kind of open this. I don't really care about the packaging. I'm going to throw away the packaging anyway, but I just realized I didn't... Uh... There's a pen. Maybe the pen can get to the tape, because of course it's taped. TV is on really loud downstairs, so apologies if wrestling comes up on the camera. Oh, there's a box in there for the cape, I suppose. And I do need to, at some point, get um, sandwich bags for these two things I have here that don't have. Um don't have those yet, because I'm just opening these for the first time on camera. So this is just a standard minifigure here. But um, the Wicked Witch comes with um, a monkey, one of the flying monkeys. That's really all I have to say about that. Also, as I've mentioned before, this is this is also the only um, Wizard of Oz character that's represented at all in this in this whole um, Lego Dimensions thing. I don't know why. I would have liked to play as the Tin Man, but 
I don't know. I'm just silly, I guess. Everyone likes the Wicked Witch of the West. Because she's... Because they, they put her in, in sassy memes that that 40-year-old moms laugh at on Facebook. like Kind of like Minions. Only green and from um, a movie from the 30s. So they put the capes in these uh, cardboard boxes so they don't get wrecked. Uh, in fact, when I uh, disassembled all of my other um, characters with capes, I put the capes into the inst the instruction booklets to kind of keep them flat and uh, not wrecked. But the uh, capes are easy to put on. They have two holes in them. Both the holes go over the uh, the neck post. She only has one face on her head, right? Right. And then she gets a hat, and she gets a broom. And seriously, of all the characters, why? I mean, I guess again because of sassy memes. But I, it's it's still kind of odd that of all of the characters to pick one of to represent Wizard of Oz, they pick the villain. And it's not like we don't have other villains in other franchises to pick from. I mean, as we'll see, DC has DC and, and Ghostbusters uh, in particular have some villains. Um, I don't know of any other villains off the top of my head. We'll see. But uh, this is our Wicked Witch of the West. She looks like she's going to say something that 40-year-old yeah, moms would laugh at on Facebook. So we're going to put her on the portal. Gamer Kid said rage quit as he left the game. So let's build the winged monkey. And, and in the cases with the um, with the fun packs and the team packs, um, the instructions for the uh, the other items that they come with will will come up immediately uh, on the game. So we don't have to play through part of a level or anything like that. That's why I came up with the uh, with the text box um, during most of the levels that we had played um, because. You know, many people were expecting to be able to, uh, you know, just build the DeLorean or whatever. Or at least, they, I guess they uh, they anticipated that people would be just be expecting to, to, like, you know, build the DeLorean if they were used to already building team packs and whatnot, because the instructions come right up. But um, it basically said, no, you have to play through the level in order to get to the instructions for the other things. But uh, with these... The instructions just pop right up. So we're building a like a, so a winged monkey. I think is what how they're that's how they're uh, wording it here. But uh, you know, so the flying monkeys, winged monkeys. I don't know. As I've mentioned, I, I've only ever seen the movie. Uh, I've seen it twice, but only got about I don't know two thirds of the way through because I wasn't watching it on my own time. I was watching them on some of those days during middle school and high school where um, where it was just like, oh, this is a, a slack day, like, you know, the last days of school or whatever. We're just going to put this on for you to watch. Actually, the, uh, the, the middle school and high school that I went to had, like, a central network for their TVs because, like, every... Every classroom like had a TV in it, and like the uh, the central bit would uh, the central network or whatever would broadcast over the uh, it's like like a kind of closed circuit thing. So um, it would broadcast over the TVs, but um, for the uh, on on it was one of those one of those uh, one of those days when we were when we were watching the you know the Wizard of Oz they had it like playing over the little network of TVs um, and I don't know what kind of like rights or licensing they had to do to get that to, to do that because uh, um, some companies can be very stingy with their licenses especially for uh, movies like this but uh, I don't know um, this was also like 20 years ago 25 years ago really yeah, I was in uh, I was in sixth grade actually, so yeah, like twenty five years ago, and um, they played it once during like the morning period 
class, and then they played it again during the last period class. And we just, I kind of just like watched it twice, and it got, and because uh, the, um, because the, uh, the periods were only like an hour and a half long, or like an hour, like, something like that, I think they were only like an hour long, uh, the, the, the class periods were. So they, they, like, each time I watched it that day, it got up to like the same point before, it's like, okay, period's over, time to switch, switch over to the next class or whatever. And I'm like, I kind of want to know what happens. Because I'm like one of two people, maybe, if there's even that many people, who haven't seen this movie. And I'm still kind of in that category. I mean, I know a lot of the basics about the movie and its premise, but... Um, and I would, like, you know, understand references, but... I think, like, the only time I've seen the mov the, the, the story in its entirety was um, when my brother was in high school. Um... There was a theater production with the Wizard of Oz, and he, I think, was in the was in the pit band for that. Uh, so, and because my, my mom was was uh, had had very much been involved in the uh, the drama department at the school, because I was in the um, I was in many uh, drama productions when I was a senior. And then when my brother was there, he was because um, like he his freshman year was my senior year. His freshman year was my senior year, so, like, my mom, who was a seamstress, uh, became involved with stuff when I started doing major uh, theater productions, and um, remained involved through my brother's tenure at the school, and beyond. She eventually started teaching classes uh, in some of these... Um, in, in like you know high schools in the area and at uh, at that school and everything so he was able to get that sort of a job or whatever just and it wasn't really like a, a serious job or anything it was just like something that she sort of did on the side she still got paid for it of course but you know it was a kind of neat thing that she did for a few years and that's just great that is that done, and hopefully these pieces don't, because these aren't like resealable packages that I'm putting these back into. So hopefully none of those get lost. So the next thing, I, the other box that I have here is for a team pack, uh, which is basically two fun packs put together. Um, the thing is, though, it's not like a bargain or anything to get like a like a like a fun pack or a team pack versus a, either way because the team packs always have characters that you can't get in fun packs. Like you're not going to see Scooby Doo and Shaggy here split up into their own fun packs. The fun packs all have their own characters. The team packs have all their own characters. And that's one of the ways they get you. That's one of the ways you get got. Because, like, what if, um, you know, what if we, you wanted one of the characters, but didn't want the other one? Well, too bad. But there were more fun packs than team packs, anyway. I, I, I know there are a lot of team packs that I don't even have, because they're all for stuff I didn't care about. Like, the only team pack I think that I really bought in 1.0 was one that we're going to see later, but... Um, there's like a whole bunch of other some ones like Ninjago and things. I'm like I don't even know who these characters are. Or like DC Comics had a Joker and Harley Quinn one, and I'm like I don't care about the Joker or Harley Quinn, so I'm not getting that either. And this tape, sorry, Spy Hunter card. This tape is a pain in the ass. I understand why they used it, but still. I need to... Because I don't have a knife or anything handy, unfortunately. So this is like... I have to try to pierce it with something. And I don't really have anything. Do I have... Like... I have nail clippers. This has a sharp bit on it I can use. Alright, I got it open. So as we've seen on the box, there are two characters that we got... 
I mean, yeah, it's a team pack, so we got two characters. But the two characters uh, in it specifically are Scooby-Doo and Shaggy from the Scooby-Doo franchise. And this is, uh, again, the only pack that had Scooby-Doo characters in it. So there wasn't anything with uh, Freddy or Daphne or Velma or Scrappy-Doo or anyone else like that. Just uh, Scooby and Shaggy. Luckily, Scooby's really easy because all you have to do is just put his head on. And he's all done. I'm just going to open this up. But also, um, Scooby is associated with a Scooby snack, which is like a sandwich uh, that we'll actually be using uh, at certain, at, one, at least one point in the game, we'll be using one of the alternate builds for the Scooby snack. But uh, Shaggy comes with the mystery machine. Oh, it's one of these. I really should have probably gotten up and gotten a knife during the uh, the jump cut there, but I didn't. Try this open. Oh, it's like the different, the slightly different kind of plastic bag that's. Uh, take these off the pad right now because I don't know. I don't want. I, I really don't want the uh, the game to just kind of sit with just characters on the screen just doing whatever. I don't know if there's some kind of like a timer on there, but I get really paranoid about something like that. So this goes on this in here. Is it? Let's pause. There we go. That's that's our Scooby. He is literally just a head and a body. They didn't make like a a mini. I mean, I, I, obviously they couldn't make a minifigure for him because he's a dog. But that's Scooby. Let's go ahead and make Shaggy as well. I need some smaller parts. And Shaggy's hair is even in there. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, don't go all over the place, please. Thank you. Put that there. To put the pieces into when I'm done. There's all kinds of like little studs and smooth bits. I actually should probably take out the... I have my brick separator in here. I should keep this handy just in case. Uh, there's a, uh, a piece stuck in the wheel that I actually need to get at. Alright, here's a little piece that I'm actually going to be using this as well. This is actually gonna make a flashlight. Not even frame. Flashlight for Shaggy to wield. But I'm also gonna take this opportunity to get all these studs out of the tires because this is gonna be a problem otherwise because we're gonna need these tires for the mystery machine. And we can't use them. There's all kinds of crap in Like, each one of these, ha they, they have all the same studs in them. They all have a small, like a, like a singular green stud and one of those transparent, like, flat ones. This one doesn't have a transparent flat one in it, but they all, they all had green studs in them. Why do they let something like that happen? This is the kind of wor world that we're living in. Also, Shaggy does have a uh, an alternate face, so that's his normal face. There goes his normal face, and then like the alternate face is like, oh, I'm scared. Apologies if I scared you with two-faced Shaggy. Two-faced Shaggy can't hurt you anymore. So. flashlight in his hand, put him on his stand, and there's Shaggy, played by Matthew Lillard, <laughs> with his little flashlight and everything. 
All right, so I'm going to build the mystery machine first because the mystery machine is larger um, and thus will get rid of some of the bigger pieces here so it'll be easier to find some of the smaller pieces for the Scooby Snack. So I'm going to go ahead and just plop Shaggy on there. Just start finding pieces. Put them together. So yeah, not, not the biggest Scooby-Doo fan I think I mentioned already, but I mean, it's okay. It's not bad or anything. I don't think it's a bad thing. I can certainly understand its popular understand understand understand. I can certainly understand its popularity, but uh, it's just not a thing that I overly go for, like any day of the week. So that's why I initially did not have a Scooby Doo set, and uh, I actually just used the. Scooby figure um, when I 100%ed uh, 1.0 back in the day. I say back in the days. It was like you know a few years ago, but I used the I borrowed the figure from my friend and just used it because there were some things that only he could do. Also, these little flowers are on like a sprue. Gonna be seeing these kind of flowers again because the uh, Princess Unikitty set uses them. Did these go in because they're because the mystery machine is it was made during a time when young folks were hippies, so the mystery machine, of course, had flowers on it as part of its iconic look. Which I should have probably put that piece on before putting on the flowers, but it still worked out the same. See, now we gotta put the wheels on. Luckily, I got all those pesky studs and things out. So that we can put the actual wheel bits into the tires. And I can already tell this is gonna go on longer than even I expected because we're already 25 minutes almost in on the footage and this is only like the second major thing that we've built. I mean yes there's introductions and things too but still. Okay this has got this massive bumper. this put on it Whoop. this way right yes this way smooth squares Separately a little bit. I think this is the front of the uh, of the van. I really wish they wouldn't have the TV on so loud. I could probably, you know, I could probably get up and turn it down myself because no one else is home. They have they mainly have it on downstairs for the uh, sake of the dog because it's like you know the old the old adage, um, you know, if you have a dog. You need to leave the dog home while you go do something, because my, my roommate works a lot. So you keep the TV on so they don't feel lonely. But um, I do have half a mind to at least turn it down. I don't know, because I don't know how much of that is coming up on the camera. It's probably not as noticeable, um, considering um, it, it's usually a little... Uh, less noticeable than I, I and I initially think it's going to be. Like when I when I play it back on the, so I mean like who knows when I'm going to get around to editing this really, but um, usually during the editing process I do. I mean I, I'll notice like a faintness of it in the background, but it's not super super noticeable. And then for for stuff like this, I'm going to have background music that I play anyway. You're probably listening to it right now. 
I don't know what it is because I haven't thought that far ahead. Charlie, put up the, uh, the, the the title of whatever is being played right now. That was actually the back of the van. Thanks, Charlie, by the way. Charlie is just a running joke that I just said, well, it was a joke that, uh, that Greg came up with during one of our podcasts. I mean, if, if you've seen the podcast, you know, but uh, Greg's, Greg used it as a joke. Um, I decided to turn it into a running joke. I am, uh, if anyone's Charlie, it's me, because I do all the editing. Oh, looks like our car is done, because it's just going on to the stand now. My phone flashing? Yes, it is, for some reason. I'll check that in a second. Here's our mystery machine. It's got flowers on it. Very nice. And write this to the toy tag that I just placed it on. The toy tag, of course, being the NFC stand. So that is saved on the game now. And uh, one moment. I'm going to check on and see what's going on with my phone real quick. Someone in Discord uh, tagged me because the, uh, the Dragon Quest mobile game just came out. Um, and he's playing. I think I have to swap over to Scooby. Yep, there we go. I had to swap over to him on the game. But uh, the, the uh, Dragon Quest mobile game just came out, and he tagged me about it because, I mean, I haven't played I don't know if I'm going to get it, because I'm not huge on mobile games. But um, I am known for being a Dragon Quest fan on the Discord. It's like a Discord for our uh, free company in Final Fantasy XI. Not XI, 14, I'm sorry. Two different games. This is going to be really, this is going to be really quick. <laughs> I can already tell. I also like how it's, it's supposed to be lettuce, but they're just like the fire, just molded in green plastic. Yeah, but this is just stacking. So, um... This should not take long at all. The most complicated part is assembling the lettuce as it seems. Yeah, because now it's just... Put this on here. It's like it's supposed to be cheese. Put another bread. Put together a little... Was that a burger? I'm going to say it's a burger. I don't even know why they call this a Scooby Snack. Scooby Snack is supposed to be a like a... like a dog biscuit. But this is a... This is like a one of those... Like, like, comically large sandwiches that they make in the show. So yeah, this is just, uh, oh, I need the, this one that actually has the studs on it. I guess this is a tomato. And I guess these pink bits are supposed to be ham. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Whoops. Let's <laughs> get forward too quickly. And then put the other bit on there, and then, like, another cheese. And then, yeah, then it's done. We're just gonna put it on the toy tag. And boom. It is a sandwich. Not much else to say about that. That was really quick. I'm gonna take off the, uh, mystery machine. Just while well, the game does its thing, I'm gonna put all this into a little baggie. That's that's garbage, but I'm still gonna put it in there. And a little bit of clean up there. Stuff this back in the box for now. Apologies. After all that, apologies to headphone users. I know how bad plastic can be like that. So I'm just going to move all this stuff off. All right, so now we're going to go to all the plastic bag stuff. And the first one I pulled out is this one. This is Cragger 
from Lego's Legends of Chima. I know nothing about Legends of Chima. I just thought that the alligator guy looked kind of funny. So I figured I'd get the alligator guy. And it, it also turns out he came with a jet ski. Um, that's going to be essential uh, for collecting some gold bricks here and there. So, as I'm assembling Cragger, I get all this guff out of the way. He's actually got like a breastplate here, and like a symbol that goes on it. Let's see if I can find that. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard. This doesn't have a lot of pieces with it. A little flame symbol on there, because I think that has something to do with the chi. It's a, it's a big... Uh, all I know about Lego Chima is that there are animal people, and uh, they want chi. And you manipulate Chi in some of these uh, puzzles and whatnot. So here's actually a Lego head for Cragger. He has that face and that face. But as it turns out, he also just has like a crocodile head that goes over it anyway. That his eyes kind of peek through. Uh, I, I think I may have said uh, alligator before. He's actually a crocodile. There is a difference. I'm just going to put him on the that real quick, and then assemble his little sword, which is this kind of kick-ass looking sword that has a, that has fire in it. So yeah, that's, uh, that is kind of badass, actually. <laughs> Looking at it again after literally years. That's Cragger, little crocodile man with a bitchin' flame sword. That's actually really cool. But yeah, I, rem I remember some of his quotes and things being um, quite uh, uh, humorous and um, entertaining. The Swamp Skimmer, that's what his jet ski is called. So we're going to build the Swamp Skimmer. I don't think, even think this is something that he has in the show. or Was it a show? I don't know. It's it's, I think it's probably a show. There's like a whole storyline and, and all that kind of crap with it. But I think this is just kind of one of those vehicles that they made up because like all of these people have to have like vehicles or items or something associated with them. Like Aquaman has a jet ski, even though Aquaman doesn't have a jet ski. Yeah, there aren't a whole heck of a lot of pieces and there's only one thing to build, so... This shouldn't take too long. A couple more of these. Put white studs on them. And they will connect thusly. The way that you assemble some of these things as well, you kind of got to make sure that the, the other pieces stay in, in place as you connect them, because come off pretty easily, but then something big comes along to anchor them down, and I'm like, okay, that's satisfying. It's going to have little torches on it, because of course it is. There's a little teeth. The, um, as we'll see, the swamp skimmer also resembles a crocodile. You can probably already tell. If it even like comes up well on camera, I don't even know. It's got little flame torches on it for like no reason. Is that the bit that I'm missing? No, it was just hidden under another piece. Well, actually, I skipped a step. Oops, my fault. I 
Oh, he's got a little jet booster on the back, looks like. So that's neat. And, okay. There's that, and that. And again, using binoculars as jet boosters. This is not the first time we've seen this on the Let's Play. Yeah, we're almost done. Holy crap. I'm getting better all the time. That's probably not even the case. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna put on the handlebars. toy tag and we're done and that is that should be it yep that's it that's the swamp skimmer resembles a crocodile of sorts and it's got little flames on the back and jet boosters and that's pretty cool so let's move this back into the bag yeah, my table is going to be pretty full it's for the net for the uh, foreseeable future. So there's just going to be a whole bunch of stuff up on here. No way around that. All right, what's the next thing? Uh, the next thing is Gimli from Lord of the Rings, who has a um, like a like an armored cart. Actually, this was the other thing. Whoop! Don't want to lose his head. This was the other thing that uh, I actually have parts still attached um, because I couldn't get them off. Whoa! That could have been worse. So that's basically he has a a beard and an axe to go with him. But yeah, I've got, like, I can't get these out. Oh, well, they're, they can get them out now, I guess. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep them in. Also, Gimli also has two faces. He's got this kind of grumpy face. If the camera will pick it up, there we go. And then he's got his standard face, which we're going to be using. Not like you can see the uh, the grumpy. Actually, put his beard on backwards. Yeah, I was about to say it's not like you can see like his his grumpy teeth or anything like that because he's got the a big old beard piece covering up, and the helmet between the helmet and the beard is covering up ninety percent of his face anyway. So like you see the angry eyes or the standard eyes. That's about it. So there's a little... Is this the one? Is that the one we want? He has the brown one, so... Okay, yeah, that's good. Something I also kind of find neat. Let's see if I should just put him on his little thing. Um, he doesn't have, like, he has, like, short legs, because he's a dwarf and he's short. They don't have any articulation to them, but, you know, they has, he has different legs than a standard uh, minifigure does. The Axe Chariot. That is the name of the vehicle that we're building. So let's uh, get the toy tag out of the way. Now, this is going to have... Let me actually take these off because this will be a little bit easier to get these instructions down. Because I don't know if they go through the same way or if they go through like the opposite holes or whatever. This one I can't get out. But the brick separator has a little post on it, so I can just kind of shove that out.
in theory. I don't think it's going to happen today. Oh, there we go. I just kind of had to approach it in a different kind of direction. Good thing I have that. No, no one building Lego should be without one of these. This is simply like the best thing ever when it comes to Lego. Because if you mess up, and God forbid you have like every single piece is like this, where it's like a really thin ass thing with like two studs on it, and it's really e like hard to get off. And it's probably going to be like the hardest thing in the world to do without one of those. And yeah, the uh, little posts, they did go out the other way. But I just wanted to be on the safe side. So got this. Flat boy. And then one of these clips. And four of these corner bits. make more of a box shape for it. We've got these two things with holes in them, with the holes facing inward. I'm guessing that the holes are more meant to be used for other bills, and these are just going to be facing inward so that they're out of the way. And another one of these clip boys on the front. thing up here, or part of a pyramid, half a pyramid. And then these clips will hold a couple bars. Now once these get into place, they're kind of hard to move around if you want to even them up, but it's doable. And then some more clippy boys. Did it fall off the table? That is a possibility. One moment while I confirm this. Uh, nope, it did not come off the table. It never actually came out of the bag. Either way, glad it's not lost. Here. And okay, these are on here like this. I think some axes will actually attach to these axe heads. As well as this brown circle and a light gray stud. Oops, some torches. Torches make everything better. Okay. And these are wheels. Instead of having like regular wheels with tires, oh, we don't want to hook these two together. Fell for one of the classic blunders. Uh oh. Brick separator, help! There we go. These will actually attach to these smooth ones. And then they'll attach to those little posts to become wheels. How are we doing on everything? I can never trust the battery. The battery is good for now, but I can never trust it. Because once it hits 25 minutes, then it's going to go down to like 3. And while I don't want to jinx it, I don't see any kind of warnings for 
storage, because if I run out of storage, then I'm pretty much out of commission on, on recording things for the rest of the night. Because it's going to take forever to offload that on the computer, and I really don't want to deal with that tonight, should it come to it. But here is our Axe Chariot. Once we can get it on the stand. There we go. Axe Chariot. It's a thing. You can use it for stuff. It's not one of the main things that I think of. It's mainly something that they put in because they couldn't think of a, a kind of vehicle to go with Gimli. They just made something up. They could have been like an Oliphant or something, but they didn't do that. Alright. So that is that one done. So let's go on to our next project, which is going to be picking up from... Next one I grab, and it's going to be Emmett from the Lego Movie, who comes with an excavator. We can always use more Chris Pratt in our lives, I suppose. Right, make sure not everything goes all over the place. Make sure all of the things are out of all the pieces are out of the bag. They are. I think he holds a little. He holds a little jackhammer. Let's get the toy tags out of the way. And let's just go ahead and just attach that, just to get that out of the way. And it's just making the minifigure and giving him a jackhammer, yeah. Okay. And I think he has two faces, yes. He has standard, happy Emmett face. Basically his default mode, if you've ever seen the Lego movie, like I have. And then like a uh, skeptical Emmett face. He's got like his hairpiece with a little cowlick. And then a jackhammer. If we can... That in his hands with yes. And there you go, there's Emmett. Focus. Oh, there it goes. Yes. Everything is awesome, all, all that jazz. So let's do Emmett's Excavator, which is the official name of the Excavator. There are a lot of black pieces here, which aren't super visible on a dark-colored surface like this, but I will make do. That's not the right piece. This is. Also, lots of tiny pieces with this, which we love. He lied. Little up thing, some clips. Flat thing here, a little grill. Drop everything because I'm a clumsy ass. That was yeah, that was the grill. Now we'll put on the wheels. Yeah, not much to say, I guess. I I, I don't know why they didn't like give Emmett like a more, I don't know, iconic Emmett thing, like the double-decker couch. That could have been a thing in some way, but I guess since he's a construction work, the construction worker, they're like, nah, give him an excavator. The excavator does have like an alternate mech suit mode, which is pretty cool though. How long are we into recording? 50 minutes, well, 52 minutes. 
And we have how many to go? Jesus. I don't know if I'm going to even be able to finish this. I mean, I can continue tomorrow. After I get off of work, which is fine. I just have to offload all of this onto the computer. Ah, this is a... This, this is not two separate pieces. That is one piece. Oh, that's, that's the wrong thing. Oh, it's another thing with a kind of a hook on it. Okay. It's a really long staff or bar or something that goes in the front clips. Got a couple of clear studs. And one of these. Standalone clippy things will go on the front bar. I don't think anything ever attaches them, they just kind of come down like that. Nothing ever really attaches to them. We have a clear, yes, like a dark transparent piece. And a couple of these things. I'm fairly sure that like all of these kind of pieces have like official names to them. I just don't know what they are because I don't care. <laughs> it's just like a flip thing and 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 a flat piece and individual studs and clippy boy and those are my names for them. Is this actually okay? That actually goes in the middle one, so it looks like a smokestack. These kind of slanted grill parts. What's the point of putting a transparent piece? We're just going to put a big old piece over it. Well, oh, and another transparent piece. Okay. And then this goes up here and a Transparent orange stud for a little light. Oh, now we're building the actual excavator arm. So these are kind of do that. Attach the clip. Another yellow part. Another clip bit. And I think the little claw part's going to go on. Well, actually, this. Well, yeah, that's foundation of that. Now the little claw bit. Like a little rake. And that's going to clip on here. That's some articulation on it. And there we are. A little cool excavator thing. that to its little stand, to these studs, and put them back in the bag. Alright, so now we're going a little bit quicker, which is fine. It's just like the, uh, the, the team sets are the ones that are, are going to be taking more time because they are um, basically two fun packs worth of content there. But also, there was, al there was also the, um, the fact that we had newer boxes that still had to be yanked open. That's where some of that time came from. Speaking of which, here's our other team pack. I don't remember if we have any other team packs in here. I don't think that we do. We'll see. But uh, we have the Jurassic World team pack, um, which features more Chris Pratt, uh, Owen Grady, and a nameless ACU trooper. So, rather than, say, other iconic Jurassic Park or Jurassic World characters like, I don't know, Alan Grant, uh, the illustrious Dr. Ian Malcolm, 
John Hammond. Frickin', uh, what's his name? Muldoon? Why not Muldoon? Muldoon would have been awesome. But no. We have Chris Pratt and a generic character. But, uh, but Owen's, um, main, uh, item or vehicle is a raptor, obviously modeled after Blue from Jurassic World. And then the ACU trooper has one of those gyrosphere things. Okay, so we've got... I'm just gonna build these so we can get the uh, instruction booklet out of the way. So, this is gonna use... Oh, they have, like, specialized pants. These are the right pants for Owen. He also has a knife. And Owen also has two faces. He has... Yeah, I'm... Awesome Star-Lord face, if that'll... Focus. Yeah, focus enough. And then, er, serious Star-Lord face. Kurt, Kurt Russell crushed my Walkman. Alright. Um, he has the more brown colored stand. So there's, there's our Owen Grady. Who is in an okay movie and a crappy movie. Seriously, I like in I like in Jurassic World to like. I mean, Jurassic World is kind of like the first Jurassic Park in a way. Um, I mean, not I mean, not really. It's like a completely different movie, and like the the. It's not even really the same plot. I mean, it's similar, but. Um, the thing is, I, I compare it to Jurassic World in the sense that Fallen Kingdom is a lot like, um, in comparison, is a lot like The Lost World. Because Fallen Kingdom, like The Lost World, was a crappy movie. And just the main difference with uh, between uh, Lost World and Fallen Kingdom is that uh, Fallen Kingdom did not use their Jeff Goldblum properly. Yes, Jeff Goldblum was in the movie as Dr. Ian Malcolm for literally less than five minutes total screen time. Like, uh, they, like, it was, you know, one of those, one of those classic movie industry kind of bait-and-switches. Where they're like, oh yeah, we're playing to your nostalgia because we got Jeff Goldblum and he's gonna be Ian Malcolm in it. And everyone's like, yay! Because we like Jeff Goldblum as Ian Malcolm. You know, as, as a, any rational person would say. And then as it turned out, like, he wasn't even a focus. Like, he was in, like, an opening sequence and a uh, an ending sequence. And he was just, like, lecturing, like, some Senate hearing. And he didn't do anything. There's the ACU trooper. Um, I'm going to call him Bill. Bill the ACU trooper. He's got a cool uh, cattle prod staff. We're actually going to use that for some electric-based puzzles here and there. So let's get to building some things. There's a lot of pieces. So first off, I do want to get the toy tags out of the way. Um, and I don't remember which ones. It doesn't look like any of them actually have other blue pieces that go on them. Either way. It's simply labeled as Velociraptor, but it's blue. Yeah, this doesn't even have, like, another... We're actually building it from the, uh, from the base up on this one. It doesn't even have, like, another transparent blue piece that goes on it. It goes directly into little plates like that. Which I don't have a problem with. So we need some transparent yellow pieces if I don't drop them like a klutzy fool. Just looking, seeing how everything's progressing with the limitations on the camera. 
per the battery levels and storage levels. They seem to be A-OK -okay for the time being. So this is like the stand for the Velociraptor. Everything else is like the Velociraptor proper. And it looks pretty neat for what they were able to build it with. And I think that with the, some of the uh, alternate um, builds for it, uh, I know one of them is a Dilophosaur, which is kind of a neat thing. Probably never going to use it. And um, I'm still debating on whether or not I actually want to do the, do the rebuilds on the real things, or if that's just going to be too much of a pain in the ass. I'm steering toward the latter. I, but I do know that we will be using some alternate builds, uh, probably when, at the very least when I get to uh, more using the DeLorean and the TARDIS, uh, I am going to be using alternate builds for them in the game, which are more useful. There's the other transparent blue piece for that. So I may change around the... Um, change around the actual models. But I don't know, because once I'm done with the game, I do want to, you know, put some of these on my desk at work, just kind of as display pieces. Like, I actually did that before. Oh, here's an extra knife with a... It's still on sprue. Um, because there were a lot of things like the Ecto-1 and, like, a lot of the minifigures and uh, the DeLorean and whatnot that I actually had on my desk at work, just, like, as direct, uh, decorations for a while. Because I liked them. And, you know, at the time, there wasn't going to be any more LEGO Dimensions, so I figured, why bother? And then 2.0 came out, and I think I brought a lot of them back in so I could use them again. And I just didn't get around to playing 2.0, even when I did get a bunch of 2.0 stuff. I, th I think I did like w a couple of the level packs. Um, and I did do a couple of the free roam worlds, but they didn't save properly. So I ended up losing a lot of progress on those, especially with the way that this game does tend to like to, to crash a lot. Yeah, it, it did, a, it did a, a good amount of crashing. And it just dawned on me I'm going to have to do a lot of up, like, update download. Like, like, it has the uh, the engine update in place to accommodate the 2.0 stuff. Um, but I have to re-download like, all of the level packs, like the, like the data for the level packs and the areas and whatnot need to be downloaded like as separate packs. Luckily they're free. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, pay for the data. You just have to pay for like the physical toy. And then it'll be like, oh, you have this toy. Well, let me da download this data pack for you. And it's actually kind of nice that they did that when all, when all said and done. Okay, I did just get a storage warning. 30 minutes left of storage remaining on the camera. So we're going to see how much we can get done in that time. But yeah, it was it was nice of them to do that, because um, they could still update the game to the point where it can at least recognize the toy and the toys and everything and have the toys there, and then be like, oh, you have this toy? Well, we've got all the data for the free roam areas and whatever other levels there need to be for that. And that way... You don't have to clog up your hard drive with things that you don't have. So that was a smart way of going about doing that. That's the raptor head. That's just gonna that's just gonna plop on there, is it? And then I think it's the legs, and then that's it. So we still got the gyrosphere to build after this, and that's why there's so many damn things on the table. Oh, that's a blue part. I don't want blue part, I want green. The dark greens and the dark blues are... You know, in this, in this kind of lighting conditions can look similar, but not close up. Now we want the blue part. Meanwhile, a lot of the lighter blue stuff is going to go with the gyrosphere. Let me 
little foot with a little um with a little claw on it because you know velociraptors have little talons at least in the movies i don't know i don't know exactly how they were in real life i know that uh in the movies i guess to kind of make them more monster movie-esque they did have them kind of taller than they normally were. I think they were like normally like, I don't know, maybe like a foot or two feet high. And of course, as we all know now, they're all covered in feathers. Oh, we need to make actually two legs. Oops. Well, that's okay. I can go back and look at the instructions again. That's fine. It didn't tell me until the last part of those. Oh, actually it actually did. It did tell me up in the corner. It says two, two times. I did not pay attention. And still, it's not overly time consuming. It's gonna get a blue piece here, and this is gonna get one of these pieces, if I remember. Oh, no, there was another bit I forgot. Oh, that goes here. Good thing I double checked that. This goes here. That's gonna make a foot. That foot's gonna have another claw. And the talons are kind of made of this like softer plastic that can be hard to put into the clips as well. Okay, so that should be it. Yep, that's it. So this is our this is our Velociraptor. It's meant to look better from the side than like from the front. It also looks fine from the front, I guess. But still, it's more of a uh, it's more of a profile thing, if anything else, if if anything, than anything else. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. All right, and then all we got to do is build the gyrosphere, and we're done with this set. And we'll see how many more of these uh, fun kits we can burn through. I just saw the next fun kit, and that's going to be a little easier to uh, to manage, I think. All right, ACU Trooper, build a gyrosphere, please. Well, i got to build the gyrosphere, actually. He's not going to do shit. He's just going to sit, sit in the game with his cattle prod and say, I don't even have a name, but I guess they're calling me Bill now. So that is most definitely the case. This actually has a piece stuck on it. But I was able to free it. I know I'm probably just going to have to put that piece back onto another stud at some point, but still. I want to do the building process as it was meant to be done. Yep. is another one of those so many small pieces kind of builds that I don't care for as much but hey at least the, uh, the end product looks good and I know that I, I've noticed that they they do this with a lot of licensed things that want to have more detail on them and that's what the smaller pieces are for is to have kind of the better detail with the little little tiny bits and whatnot But it's still annoying to assemble sometimes. Well, the way I'm sitting on my couch is also kind of annoying. I'm not technically choose to do it that way because I'm because of the, the amount of space between the couch and the table. I'm kind of sitting like on the very edge of the frame, and it is quite uncomfortable. Because normally I'm sitting, you know, a little bit back on the on the actual couch. That's not what I wanted to do at all. I want to put these in the little wrenches. And then the wrenches go in the clips. This is just the kind of a stand the gyrosphere goes on, really. Okay.
This is going to be a longer part too. I mean, I guess the, all of these have been longer parts, but I can I can foresee this being like the same length as one of the older as one of like the first parts that I did, where they were like three hours long. I could foresee this being a, oh, somewhere about that. I don't even know how long it's going to take to like assemble like the 2.0 stuff either, because half of that stuff isn't even out of the boxes yet. There are even some that I bought like when they were new that I was intending to use and never took out. Like there's like the, the Lego City Undercover Chase McCain one. I never took that out of the box. I have like an Excalibur Batman, which is Batman and kind of like this knight armor stuff. I never took that out of the box. I had the Goonies uh, level pack. Never took that out of the box. Because I never, just never got around to playing the game again. I did this backwards. Actually, got to put these sphere panels on because it doesn't actually like make a full sphere um, in this uh, for this model. I'll show you in a second, but it's just kind of these halves that slot onto these pegs. So it's a little seat with little controls on it. But the little panels that go on the outside give it the illusion of being a sphere. Like that. Uh, yep, yeah, and this is this is it for the gyrospheres. This is just gonna pop on that. And that's your gyrosphere. Basically, the gyrosphere is just this part up here. And then, like, the rest of it is just kind of like a groovy-looking base for it to go on. But still, looks the part, I suppose. Let's take the raptor off. And then save that to the NFC tag while I put all of the extra pieces away. There's a lot of extra pieces with this one. Holy cow. this up. Okay. Now the next one, I actually did see the next one I'm going to be picking up here. Like the next one that's easy to just kind of pick up and get over with is Slimer from the Ghostbusters with a slime cannon, or slime thrower, whatever they want to call it. And this is going to be a bit of a quick one too, because if I remember correctly, it's just kind of... Slimer is just kind of like one piece. Oh, there's actually a little clear piece that he sits on as well, and also holds a sausage, because he is a gluttonous ghost. pieces in there. But Slimer himself is just one bit. That's the Slimer. Holding the sausage. Oi oi. Alright, let's bring up the instructions. The slime shooter looks pretty simplistic as well, considering how many pieces that I see. And most of these are, well, I said most of them, but a lot of these are just, they actually are bigger pieces. I put these on upside down. That's okay, they didn't fully take. So, I'm just kind of work these off. Come on. 
This is probably going to be harder than I thought. Because I... This, this ring is actually supposed to go underneath the plate one, not the other way around. And the thing is, like, half of it is kind of fully on there, whereas, like, the other two sides aren't. But the sides that are and the sides that aren't were, like, across from each other. But I got it. And that's what happens when I just assume how it's going to be. There we go. That's better. And... Whoa. Barrel almost fell off. Then we're just building the rest of the cannon. And separate instructions. Well, it's, it's it's one of those things where it's like, okay, now put this down and start working on this part. And this part is just like the rest of the cannon. But to be fair, like I said, it, it is... It's not going to take long at all. It's not going to... Because there aren't a lot of parts to go to it. Which is, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Got all these other studs and whatnot. They're just kind of going on there. Probably meant to be used for other build variations for this. But in like the main one, they just kind of have a got to have a place to put it. Put them. So did I put this on the right way? Because I'm mostly about this kind of thing. You know, what? that's the right way. I don't care. That. Oh. I do still want things to be straight on there, though. And there's a little lever. And then a wheel. And then on the other side, there's going to be a little megaphone with a green part like that on it. Again. That, and then that, and then this, and then this all goes into the barrel. Oh, where did the barrel go? Got the barrel slots in here. And then this clips onto the hinge. And Bob's your uncle. About, say, 15 minutes of film left. But there's our slime thrower, slime launcher, slime cannon, whatever they want to call it. Just a thing that they made up to put with Slimer. So we can move on to the next thing. I think I'm gonna do one more and then cut this section of the video and then continue once I can offload this footage. I mean, it's also gonna be one video, of course, but. I'm just gonna make sure I can finish doing what I need to do. All right, so oh, that wasn't on straight. There we go. Let's pick a good one. Let's actually see what I have and choose one. Now, the rest of these are fun packs, so that's good. That's a good sign. Or wait, what's this? That's just not. A, that's not a fun pack. These are all fun packs. Let's do this one. Yeah, let's do this one. This is Cyborg. Cyborg is the representative of the DC Universe. 
that is that I can consider to be my favorite of what's represented. I think I mentioned it before, but my favorite, uh, like, my favorite comic book hero is Green Lantern. Green Lantern is not in the game at all, I don't think. He may, be, he may be in the game. There might be a Green Lantern in the game, but you can't play as one. And, um, also, my second favorite is The Flash. The Flash is in the game, but you can't play as him. So... My third favorite is Cyborg, so at the very least, they got my third favorite in there. And that's better than a sharp stick in the eye, I suppose. Also, he does have alternate faces. He's got happier face, and then he's got grr, angry face. As you do, we're going to use the happier face, I think, even though Cyborg is usually... He's usually grumpy. I mean, after all, he didn't ask to be a cyborg. He just kind of... His dad just kind of turned him into one. And he gets one of these. Where's the actual gun part? Actually, there's... It's already assembled, because I really can't disassemble this. This is a stud launcher gun. You put a stud in here, you push this little button, and then the... Sh the stud shoots out and gets lost somewhere. Luckily, it's not a hair trigger thing, so I don't have to worry about it like going off, um, like at random or anything like that. And it even shows in the instructions that two of these there's there's two other studs here that are specifically for the stud launcher. But we're not going to uh, do anything with those. We're just going to put those back in the bag. But here's Cyborg. No, oh, I gave him the angry face by accident. There, we want the happy or smiley face. Good old Vic Stone. Alright, there we go. Now he's happy. He's like, yeah, I'm in a video game. That's something he might be happy about. I don't know. Maybe Teen Titans Cyborg would be happy to be in a video game. He has something called the Cyber Guard, which is a mech suit. I mean, he practically has a mech suit, so I don't know why he needs one, but... Again, this is just one of those things that they kind of made specifically for the game. And I'm going to build this as quickly as possible, because I'm running out of film. Luckily, it shouldn't be too much. But these mech suit things usually are a little bit more complicated as far as these sort of builds go. So I'm just going to kind of shut up and do this as quickly as possible so I don't run out of time. I mean, I you know, probably won't shut up, but I'm not going to try to think too hard about things because that'll slow me down. Just look and see what the parts I need are, and then put them on. Let's see if I can find them. There it is. That's going to be like the legs connector. Oh, great. The legs are separate. But that's okay. We can get through this. You know, and if, if in the event that we do run out of film, I'm not going to stop building and leave the pieces out. I will finish building and then show it off when the footage comes back up. But for the time being, I don't think that that's going to necessarily be something we'll have to worry about. And I do worry about it because we have now eight minutes left of film. I say film, it's all digital, but you know what I mean. There's only space for so much. On the camera's onboard storage, which is like 16 gigs. I've, I've, I've thought here and there about getting a bigger SD card for it, but 
I'm like, what's really even the point since I don't record much on it at a time anyway? I usually don't do things like this that are this long. Because usually if I do sort of footage of myself for a Let's Play video, it's through the face cam, but for something like this, I mean, also considering I didn't want to set up a face cam, I'll pick that up later. I don't even know where my thought was going with that. The face cam sucks for stuff like this. But with, um, with the way that the LP is, it works a bit better because I can just easily swap back and forth between the game footage and just my face. But with something like this where I'm not actually making game footage, it's better just to do it this way. Okay, that's the mech suit I think is done. Yes. Because then it gets a little stand where we put the blue part on as normal and then it gets this little spindle that goes up his nether regions for lack of a better term. And that is the Cyber Guard. He kind of has like a cool gun arm and then a little baby arm, baby T-Rex arm. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this on here and just one moment I'm going to jump cut to whatever footage I make after this. Alright, and we're back. Um, it is now the next day. <laughs> so, yeah, I got all the footage offloaded and we're going on to the next I guess half of these. Apologies if, uh, you're, if it's a little jarring with the alternate slightly altered uh, camera angle. Um, obviously I had taken the camera off of the tripod and just kind of put it back on, so I don't know what kind of angle it exactly had or whatever, but it's fine. You're still going to be able to see everything. So the next character we have here um, is uh, Cyberman from Doctor Who. Uh, it is a fun pack with a Dalek as an item. So we've got kind of two characters here, although much like the, uh, the Flying Monkey, one of them is um, not really a, 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 a character you can um, uh, directly play as. I'm fairly sure that it's just, yeah, it's just the... He's not holding anything, is what I was looking for in the instructions. So that's just easy, it's a little minifigure Cyberman. He wants to delete things. And we'll put him on the toy pad to construct our Dalek, who wants to exterminate things. So, yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of other stuff uh, kind of organized here as well. Um, I got sandwich bags for the, the two boxed things that I had, so I don't have the boxes taking up all kinds of space in, in the storage. And I also tidied up my workspace a little bit here, um, so that I got all the characters on this side here, I got all the items and vehicles on this side, so they're not uh, super in the way like they kind of were before the jump cut. But that didn't stop me from accidentally knocking things over right before I uh, started the camera up again. That was inevitable. Let's put it like that. Dalek is, uh, it's not the most straightforward thing, but um, considering that it's a fun pack, I think we're out of team packs as well. I think I mentioned that. We're, we've already done our last team pack, so we're not, we're not gonna have like a whole mess of gubbins all over the uh, all over the table and it's gonna be a little bit easier to find all the pieces that we need because there aren't gonna be two as or there aren't gonna be a as many of them and B 
well, that's pretty much it. Is there aren't going to be any of them. There's no B, B to it. Over, that's going to go on the back. And we've already got the makings of a good Dalek because the um, the studs kind of uh, emulate the bumps on the outside of the uh, Dalek's armor. So they pretty much had that in uh, in mind, which is nice. But here's an interesting thing: we're actually putting the Dalek on the toy tag before we actually finish building it, because we still have to build its head. But now it's having me build the base for it. Fair enough. I'm gonna just keep building on that. Ah, because we're building the head separately, I see. Got this little disc piece. This smoother disc piece. Now, this is the body, okay. The upper body, I should say. There's the laser slash whisk hand. And then this part's supposed to be like the plunger arm. And we've got this is the eye stalk. Along with a stud on there. That should just fit in, apparently. Sorry about the jump cut there. And we've got the little. This bit goes along with the head. Do these do anything? No, nope. it's just gonna. All right, that's our that's our Dalek. Cool. Let's put this stuff back in here. That didn't take like five minutes. That bodes well for everything else I would say. And let's see on the screen, everything's registered. go to our next thing. Ooh, this is, it's Bane. Nobody cared who I was until I put on the mask. Well, obviously it's comic Bane, it's not cheesy Dark Knight Rises, Tom Hardy movie Bane, although I kind of wish it was. Although, from what I understand, or from what I remember, I should say, um, this does make references uh, to Dark Knight Rises Bane, at the very least. I know that um, one of the things he says when he shows up on the in the game is, let the games begin. Although, he doesn't use the, the Tom Hardy voice, unfortunately. He just uses, um, I guess, whatever voice is, you know, associated with comic or uh, animated series. Like, any kind of animated Bane, I guess, these days. And he's got a drill car for a, um, for a vehicle. So, like, again, nothing really... I don't know if he... He, he may have a drill car in the, in the comics. I don't know. I don't read the comics, but... I, mean, I don't read Batman comics, anyway. Back when I read comics, for, this, for as far as DC was concerned, I... Um, I read Green Lantern, Flash, Cyborg, obviously. Um, also, Blue Beetle, a little bit, for DC. I think that was mainly it. We have to build a little... Venom pack. I think Venom is the name of the, uh, of the, uh, the drug he uses. I could be wrong. Whoops. It's me being a clumsy butthole again. Okay, so let's put a backpack on him. And then, these little pieces here. meter. Is this it? This is it. How do I put that on? Like so. Make sure it's straight because I have... I'm fairly sure I have some sort of OCD. Ah. 
There we go. Got a little tank. And this is gonna pop on its back there. I'll put him on his toy tag. And there he is. So yeah, it's very much Comic Bane with the uh, wrestling mask and everything. And the tank on his back. Drill Driver is the name of his drill car, apparently. Move this back out of the way. Activate instructions, please. Okay. Also, if we ever play as Bane, I'm fairly sure we're going to find places to play as Bane. I'm still going to make Dark Knight references, because... Uh, that's what he's become for me, it's just... Dark Knight Returns references. Oh, I'll put other studs on studs on studs. Don't look that up in Google. I can only predict pain. Well, I don't know. It depends on what you're into. I'm not gonna expand on that anymore. I've already um, killed that joke, I think. Well, now that that's over with, how are you today? <laughs> camera because the building is part of the experience. Make sure the wheels don't roll away because this is exactly the sort of thing I'm afraid of. There's some kind of gnat or something that's kind of uh, flying around in here, so that's great. I suppose since it's colder out these days, with it still technically being winter. Technically it's well end of end of, end of February. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be spring officially until the end of March. But you've got things wanting to go inside because it's warmer. Well it wasn't that bad out today. So little handles over the uh, or near the panel there. I didn't have to put anything on these, like, little gun bits, did I? Let me just double check. Nope. We're good. Okay. All these little angled bits. Plug boy in there. Oh, that's gonna be for the drill. Studs on either side here. I guess all those studs are gonna be going on there. Each of these gets a stud. Okay. And that just plops on the front. Wheels on. It's a very simple drill car, but it works. Should be it. Yep, that's it. There's a lot of extra pieces for this one, but yeah, so let's make our little toy tag base. If I can line everything up properly. And there's 
our drill driver. Yes, the drill does spin quite easily. Okay, fair enough. Let's go ahead and register this and put the extra bits away. backpack in there. Okay, that's done. All right, who's up next? It is Bad Cop from the Lego Movie with his police car. Little Liam Neeson. All right, dropping things. This is another one of those that have like, a f that has like a f he has a few of these, um, like extra red studs too because uh, like Cyborg he has uh, one of these stud launcher guns. So that's great. Okay, so that's just kind of putting them together and also he's another one with uh, with with two different faces. He's got the standard. Um, Bad cop face, and then he also has a happy good cop face, much like he did in the movie. So I can find all of his parts here. And put a stud in the stud launcher. colored pieces isn't always the best way to go, but it's whatever. I think we'll be able to figure it out. Okay. There he is with his... Sorry again. There he is with his um, stud launcher and all that. And, uh, oddly enough, this is the only LEGO movie character I know of, uh, in this game that doesn't have, like, all new lines, um, made for the game. I guess they couldn't afford to get Liam Neeson in the booth, so they just use, uh, like, uh, archive audio from the movie. Which is fine, you know, uh, there's, like, five characters, I think, total. And he's the only one, so like, you know, four out of five ain't bad. Where is this piece? There's a couple of them. Okay. Again, everything is the same dark color. So it's kind of hard to see, but I'll make do. We, don't, we need more pieces like this. really rare to see pieces like this in Lego sets anymore, at least in my more recent experience with any Lego set, really. But I've uh, talked about that before. It's just uh, one of those like, annoying, irksome things to me. Even the wheels are black. Let's see. I've also been 
blessed with not having studs in the wheels and whatnot that are hard to get out. So that's going to be a little more bearable here. Honestly, when you get right down to it, it's just a police car. There really isn't too much else to it. Let's see, we the bumper. Transparent bits. There we go. There's the headlights, looks like. And then this is the front of the bumper. That clips onto the front. Like this clip bar go on the front as well. Make it the back bumper. Those gray pieces. I'm guessing what I assume to be like turbo exhaust. And some tail lights. Slaps on the back there. Got these wheel wells. Okay, now we've got this flat piece here to make the hood. Got a couple of transparent slanty things for the windshield. really windy a lot lately, too. And then a spoiler bit for the back. Because evil police cars have spoilers. Neighbor's dog barking. lights. Blue one and a red one. I think that should be it. Yep. There you go. There is the bad cop police car. Save that to the tag. Again, a lot of extra bits, but some of these Red studs are meant to be extra ones for shooting, which I'm not going to be doing, because that would be horrible. I don't want to lose things, as I've said, and just even coming up with the idea for stud launchers like that is a surefire way to lose all your things, at least the things that shoot out of the gun. Next one on top here is Legolas from Lord of the Rings. Uh, he has a giant ballista of sorts as his vehicle. There we go. Anything special we need for his figure other than his bow? Nope. Riled up the dog next door, but hopefully that doesn't rile up the dog here even more. So we've got two faces for Legolas as well. We've got standard stoic Orlando Bloom and grumpy battle ready Orlando Bloom. We're gonna go with the standard one because I'm boring. He's got a hair bit. And he holds a bow. Got an Elrond one that I got for uh, pre-ordering uh, Lego Lord of the Rings back when that came out. He has a halberd. In pretty much the same manner of faces, actually. Just uh, his hairpiece was brown because Hugo Weaving has brown hair. He's not holding on to his bow. At 
There we go. Alright, now he's got a bow. Come on. Yes. Alright. I don't know how much of this has been out of focus. I do apologize. I haven't been paying super much attention to the screen. And the autofocus on, the, on this can be dodgy at best. And, of course, the Giant Ballista goes with a not-as-cool name, Arrow Launcher. Isn't that what any bow is, really? How many more of these have to go through? That was a lot. Well, I say there's a lot, but it's probably not as many as I think there are. But, you know, thinking of all these, of some of these uh, franchises, they actually had, like, existing LEGO sets before LEGO Dimensions. Not all of them did, but some of them did. And it just makes me wonder, like, if they ever had any plans to bring out any other, um, like, characters for this, for, like, a franchise that already existed. Like, I would have, I would want to play as Aragorn. Or the or Green Lantern or the Flash. Um, I can't think of any other like Lego movie characters that we were missing. Like they got pretty much all, like everyone from that, but you know other Ghostbusters would have been neat. I did look though uh, at one point because. Um, they initially did have plans uh, for a third, at least, at the very least, a third um, series, like a 3.0. And unfortunately, that fell through because uh, I, I fairly sure I mentioned this in like the um, the like the whole intro bit, which was months ago, so I don't exactly remember if, if I had mentioned this, but. By the time 2.0 had come out, like halfway through 2.0, Toys to Life games had oversaturated the market so much that no one was buying them anymore. And, um... So they cancelled it. But I did see... Um, there's a list online. I don't remember exactly what all was there. There was some stuff in there that, like, I didn't know anything about and didn't care about. But there was a lot of stuff that I would have really liked to see. Um, oh, also, these bits already have, like, little talons in them. Um, they are way too hard to take out, and I didn't even bother. And I will sacrifice that step on my own behalf here. This isn't as well held together, I think. But they would have had, like, um, they, they could have had. This wasn't like a, this wasn't like a, um, like a 100%. Actually, here's our ballista, now that that's done. It looks kind of, just, it looks like a giant crossbow with wheels, really. I mean, I think ballistas were mostly like that anyway, but... I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of that. But, um, I mean, they, they did have some things. I don't know how, exactly how many went past the... Riff refocusing there. How many, how much went past, like, the, uh, got, even got into the negotiation phase. But, um, uh, I mean, they had stuff that I don't care about. They had, like, Shrek. Um, I'm sure that would have made some people happy. They had... I remember, I remember one of them that stood out was the Croods. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was 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 possibly one. Um, possibly spurred out by the spurred out by the fact that um, possibly Indiana Jones as well, uh, since uh, Disney Infinity had had stopped at that point. Um, 
but some that I, I particularly remember include Thunderbirds, and I'm sincerely hoping like old 60s Thunderbirds and not like uh, early noughties Jonathan Frakes Thunderbirds. Uh, I saw that movie recently, and I don't think I'm ever going to be getting um, that hour and a half of my life left. I don't know what's wrong with the focus on this camera today. I'm sorry, there really isn't too much I can do about this, because the lighting, possibly. I think that's what's, oh, what's going on with that. You really can't tell with the way things are, are covered up, but this is actually Benny from the Lego Movie. My favorite character from the Lego Movie. Here. There we go. Benny. And as you might expect, he has a spaceship as a vehicle. The one thing that he won't shut up about. It's on brand. And he has... He has a gun. But, uh, it's not a stud launcher this time. He also has two faces. He has standard Happy Benny face, and he has old-school Lego face. That is neat. Um, yeah, they had, uh, they had Thunderbirds, they had Godzilla was on the list. Minecraft, I probably would have gone for, because I like the, the uh, Lego Minecraft sets that I have. Let's put them on the right way on here. And we got Benny. Benny's spaceship, that's all the spaceship is called, which is fair enough. That's an apt description. I mean, then again, you know, Arrow Launcher is an apt description of a ballista as well, but Benny's spaceship sounds, you know, stupid nap. Sorry about that. I, I accept Benny's spaceship over Arrow Launcher. Any day of the week. Aero launcher sounds boring. This is a spaceship that belongs to Benny, and Benny is awesome. So, um... That's, that's what I'm sticking to today. And this is one of those ones that is... a little bit... I don't want to say complicated, but... It has a lot of these small bits for more detail. And it looks really nice when it's done. But at the same time... I'm not going to say it's a pain in the ass to build, but... There are... more little pieces than I would like. How does this go on? Oh. Wait, was there? There's a piece I missed. There was indeed. There was this bit that goes on here. See, I'm already neglecting to pay attention to things. And that's my fault. It's already pretty much coming together here. I don't 100% remember all of this stuff. Like I said, it's been, it's been literally years since I played this game, let alone built anything. I mean, not counting the stuff that I did for this Let's Play. But, um, you know, there are bits and puzzles and whatnot that I don't exactly remember how to do. Like what happened, you saw with the, um, in the Midway level, with the, uh, the Knight from Joust. Like, it took me a good, a good bit to remember what to do with that.
And this is why I keep doing jump cuts, because... Now my roommate's outside smoking and the dog's not going to stop whining, and it's going to pick up on camera because I don't have a door! And I can't keep jump cutting, because that's going to take up way too much film that I would have to edit out. Because we're already 35 minutes in. And I have maybe an hour and a half, two hours worth of film on this. I say film, I mean it's all digital, but you know what I mean. I can only save so much footage. I don't have an like, extra SD card laying around, and I have 16 gigabytes of memory on the camera. Because honestly, I don't usually film too much at a time, usually. Okay. So now we're at the base, and this is just gonna be... At least this is using up the extra pieces. All right, there we go. There is Benny's spaceship, and it looks—it lo does look very reminiscent of the kind of spaceships that we would get in the old space Lego sets back in the, at least the ones I remember from back in the '80s, early '90s. That's when I was a—that's when I was a youngin'. You know, I've. Uh, Still kind of coping with the fact that I'm not young anymore. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm an old person, but I'm not young anymore. That's for damn sure. Though it is still very much a pet peeve of mine whenever people who are younger than me, especially like if they're in their 20s, start complaining about being too old. Next up, we have you kind of see him peeking back behind all the stuff there. That's Mr. Stay Puffed. I don't think there's anything really to him. I think he's sort of just. Yep, very standard minifigure construction. Okay. Sorry about another jump cut there. Anyway, I think this is the last of the Ghostbuster sets that they actually did for this. So they only had they had the level pack, then they had Slimer, and Mr. Stay Puffed was the other one. Mr. Stay Puffed, or Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, depending on how you'd like to refer to it. There he is. Comes with a terror dog. Again, as a uh, an item slash vehicle sort of situation. So not. It's still a, technically a character, but not something that you can uh, control directly. Uh, you have to like ride around on it. And there's a lot of similar looking pieces here. Everything's like a drab gray. Which, you know, makes sense, but there's a lot of similar looking pieces as well. Like some with two studs, some with two studs that have a little peak on them. Uh, some of them that are just like one stud, some of them that have clips on them. They're just like regular studs. So, this may be one of those that... I don't know, in a way, takes a bit longer to do because there's just so much small... So much small. I think that's a good way to put it. There's a lot of small. Which makes sense because they are, you know, smaller models. They had to find a way for you to build something like this and then use it on the on the, uh, the toy pad and not be super cumbersome. So it makes sense the way that they were engineered, but it's still... I don't know. It's fine. Um... If I'm playing this kind of stuff, just kind of on my own, but I will admit I am kind of rushing myself because again, I only have so much uh, I can record at once, and that's my fault. That's really my own fault. I'm just rushing things, and I almost lose pieces because of that. Everything will be fine by the end of it. At least I'm not I'm not missing any pieces. A little ball joint. And that's for the tail. And more of these. 
cheeks on them. Which, oddly enough, blend very easily into everything else. They have, like, a more unique shape to them, but... Again, then, since everything looks so similar, it can be a little tougher to find them sometimes. There's anything else in between there, is there? Yes, there is, actually. That's what I get for overlooking stuff. Oh, well. Heck, there may be... There may have been times in some of these other models where I have you know, all these extra bits, and I probably forgot to put some in, but at least the models themselves are still structurally sound, and that's really all I care about. Ooh, turn upside down. And then give them little feet. This is... Yeah, you got the ones, these single squares with studs on them, but then you also have like the same one but without the studs on top, and that's confusing if they're uh, upside down. I got more of these little claw pieces, kind of like what we put on the excavator, except, and the even the uh, little teeth on the that crocodile jet ski before, but now they're. Dog claws. Okay. And we've got a bit of a lighter colored piece. And that's something. Okay, and then another one of these. Oh, a bit on the back here. See, what I'm doing is I'm. I'm forgetting some things because I'm looking at like the main picture, like as the steps go, and I keep neglecting to look up into the corner at the at the pieces I'm going to be using next. Sometimes I forget to do that, and then that's how I forget pieces because I overlook where some of the other ones are placed. Don't do that. Don't be like me. Don't be awesome like me. I'm not awesome. It's fine. You don't have to say anything. I don't have illusions of grandeur anymore. Studs, you have to throw the studs. And again, it's not like there wasn't there was much more to add. Much this, they're, they're doing this head for the terror dog is a separate part of the instructions. So there wasn't anything else that really could have been put anywhere at that time. Giving his eyes. I say him. There's. I mean, this could be either one. But when it all comes right down to it, it really doesn't matter. It's not like it specifically says Zool or Vince Clortho, it's just Terror Dog, because the, they look the same. <laughs> He's got little slanted bits that give him angry eyes. Be it. Yep. That was fit down at the bottom there. And there's our terror dog. So let's put him on there. Or her depending on which one it is, because it doesn't really matter. No, I, I, I put the model on the central panel. I placed the model on the central panel. Don't tell me I didn't. I think its feet are too big. Yep. 
Yes, save. Read it. Is the... Is the chip malfunctioning? Uh-oh. Well, let me put these away. Um, I didn't expect that. For it to just, like, not read the chip. Oh, boy. Um, not sure what to do here. I don't have any spare toy tags. These only come, like... These only come, like, one one per set per model. They don't... They don't I don't even think they sell spares of these. Well, it's not anymore. Well... Let me try some. Let me see if it may... Is this the reader? No. No, no. <laughs> now it thinks the spaceship is the pterodon. So it's just the, uh... Good. Okay, yeah, now it thinks the spaceship is a terror dog. Okay. Let me go ahead and fix this. I'm going to put Benny on here. I know you can't see any of this on the screen. Building instructions. Reset toy tag. Alright, there we go. So, we good? Game? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Now, does this... Can this read what this was before? So, it reads what this was before. Which was a terror dog. And it's like a fully upgraded pterodog. We don't want that, though. I'm not looking to do that. We're looking to start from scratch here, so... Pterodog. Reset toy tag. Please? Okay, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> it sees it as the terror dog. I think it takes the upgrades from the from the game file itself. Um It's still registering what it's supposed to be. If it has upgrades on it, what do you do? I don't care. I don't I don't care anymore. Let's let's just move on. Let's let's move on to Aquaman. Aquaman has a jet ski, even though he doesn't need one. I honestly don't know why I bought Aquaman. <laughs> I'm not the hugest Aquaman fan. Then again, nobody was uh, when this, this game came out. Nobody was an Aquaman fan until that J Jason Momoa movie came out. Then everyone was an Aquaman fan for a while. Because... Because the DC movies somehow made that cool. Even though, like, there was... I don't know, it was was Aquaman of any note? I remember, like, the only real movie being of note for the, for the DC movies was, like, Wonder Woman. Also, he has... Kind of weird, but... I mean, not weird that he has, like, an alternate face that you can show off, but... Weird in that I'm showing it to you when he's already on there and it looks creepy because he has like a face on the back of his head. Now you can't unsee that. But there you go, you got his little Justin Bieber hair on there and his trident. What did the, what what kind of name did they give the jet ski? Aqua Watercraft. Well 
No points for originality. I don't award points for this. I don't even know if I'm going to be using this. I mean, I may. I, I have a kind of a plan, at least with the... Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it with the story levels when we go back through in a little bit, but um, for the uh, free roam areas, um, I'm going to have a plan for them where um, I basically, by default, will use anything that's supposed to be in that world or whatever, and only use stuff from other franchises if there's no other way that I can, you know, do a puzzle. So like with the DC Universe, where I have more characters, or like the Lego Movie um, Free Roam area, where I have you know more characters for that, I'm less likely to use characters from other franchises than um, I do if I was like in you know The Wizard of Oz or Scooby Doo, because they only have like one set each for them. Jurassic World's another example. If I remember correctly, this one just looks kind of I iffy. <laughs> like it's just a bunch of stuff sort of thrown together and say, yep, it's a watercraft, I suppose. I mean, I guess it could be. I mean, I don't live in Atlantis. I don't know what their vehicles look like, if they have vehicles. Ooh. We've got separate instructions here. That. Clippy boy. And some flippers. If I can pick them up. It put flippers on the watercraft to make it extra watercraft like. People wear flippers in the water, right? Alright, I'm doing the other side. swing up. This is gonna sit in right there. Oh, I've actually put a trident in here. That's cool, I guess. Yeah, and these certainly do swing up. Put some water flames on the back. Kind of like when we had lettuce flames on that sandwich. There's that gnat again. These don't feel like these should be extra pieces. Where am I, am I missing pieces somewhere? Oh, I haven't I just haven't put them on yet. That's what I get for jumping to conclusions. And we only have one extra piece. And this bit came off. That's fine. And here is the Aqua Watercraft. I don't know about this, guys. <laughs> looks kind of dumb to me. Well, it looks a little better in the larger model on screen, but it's not exactly the same. And they have a little bit more design and parts in the on-screen models than they do with, like, the physical ones because of... I mean, you'll you'll see more of what we mean, what I mean, like, later on. How many do we have left here? We've got one, two, three... Oh, we only got four left. Cool. Again, camera... I, again, I'm not looking at the screen that much. I don't, that's, I don't even know half the time when it goes out of focus. But here's Princess Unikitty from the Lego movie. She has one of my favorite vehicles in the game. She has like a, a flying duck 
mobile thing that shoots rainbows or something. And Princess Unikitty is actually going to need some in some construction of her own. She's not a standard minifigure. I think she's one of the only characters besides like Slimer that is a character that doesn't have like a standard mini kit build. And there are a ton of tiny pieces here. This is actually the the um, the one model. I actually did lose a piece on this for a while. Also, there's already studs on here. I'm just going to weave those on there. But uh, yeah, I actually lost the uh, one of the one of the pieces on the uh, on the vehicle. Um, I don't know if you remember Rado Vlog back when I was still called Rado Goji, and I did a, a vlog for a while. I pointed out the little model and how it had a missing piece. Um, I, unfortunately, I can't pull that up here because I don't have the raw file for that. That was like uploaded directly from my phone, so I don't have um, the capability of showing that to you right now. This lighter one will go on here. But uh, I just randomly found it um, while I was looking for something else. I don't remember exactly what I was looking for, but... I have a messenger bag, and I was digging around in the messenger bag, so hopefully like, I could find this thing. I think it was like the, the back clasp of a, of a pin or something. I don't, think that that, that, that's exact, I don't think that's exactly what it was. I think it was something else, but... Um, while I was digging around in one of the pockets in, the, um, in, that, uh, in that messenger bag... I found the missing piece to the um, to the vehicle because I had brought it over to my friend's house one day because you know we played this a lot at the time and I guess the piece just kind of bro broke off in the bag but I'm glad that I found it because I'm not going to expose it again about how I feel about losing pieces and this was like years later too at least a year later. There's Princess Unikitty. I thought that she had a um, an alternate face, but apparently she doesn't, in, at least not in this. So let's build her rainbow, what's it, what's it called? Cloud Cuckoo Car. That's actually an apt name for that. Uh, it, it's like a flying duck looking thing. And the mode that I usually used it in had like rainbow cannons. I think that's like the third build for it, actually. So I don't know if we're going to get to that point with this. We may just like, you know, for a lot of the free roam stuff, just sort of stick to like different, uh, like, like one build for some of these. Actually, we need the lighter or the uh, darker colored studs. Dark colored transparent studs. There's like a ton of different colored studs for these, especially for the um, the rainbow cannons, because they were all kinds of different colored studs just kind of stacked on top of each other. But I'm afraid that uh, with the standard build, a lot of those are going to be like just kind of parked underneath other pieces just to have a place for them to go. There's the purple one. And that's just kind of being put into the foundation here. There's a blue one. And two orange ones on top of them, so... Yeah, that, that answers that question for me. Now, oddly enough, I didn't figure out until recently that LEGO has a way that you can just, like, order individual pieces off their website. Um, fairly sure that that's expensive. Uh, because LEGO are expensive to begin with. 
I don't, I don't know how much, like, a little piece like, like this. It was, I think it was, um, it was one of these pieces. And I don't know how much that is, probably like three or four bucks. But, um, you know, if you have, like, an idea in mind and you need to buy specific parts to do that, you can, you can buy them piecemeal like that. I just, I can only assume that it's, like, incredibly expensive to do so. I'm sure that there are just, like, programs that you can download and, you know, build things that way or, like, you can engineer things like that. I, I saw, I, I happened across at one point, like, some guy, I don't, like, watch his stuff regularly or anything, but I just kind of kind of come across a couple of his things where he, like, made up his own Transformers characters and made Lego, Lego, actual, like, transforming Lego Transformers for these characters he made up, which was kind of a cool thing. But you gotta be, like, really creative to make something like that work. I, I do not, um, sadly. I don't think I have that kind of level of creativity. Oh, put the eyes on the duck as well. Oh, there's an extra eye. That's kind of creepy. I mean, not the duck face. The duck face is fine, but just like the fact that I have like an extra eye piece, it's kind of creepy. But also, I had four flowers, but I only used two, so I have two of them still in the little sprue thing. Uh, two more of these. Just covering up more of these colored studs. I think some of these colored studs are just going to be extras. Yep, because I'm going to just... Uh, Plop this on the base that we already have built. And that is Cloud Cuckoo Car, a neat little duck car. I like that a lot, actually. That means all this stuff is extra. Which is good, because um, studs can be pretty easy to lose. As discussed. Let's just be a little careful. Just kind of shoveling these into the bag. He says as he wildly just kind of loosely picks them up and tosses them into the bag. Ah oh, well, it's fine. Nothing fell out. Just get rid of that. Okay. Next character. Yeah, we got plenty of time. Superman! Yep, Last Son of Krypton is, of course, a DC character in the game. I think like the only... Oh, this came out of the... He has a cape. I actually had it in the instruction booklet so that it wouldn't get ruined. But it came out anyway. Which is... You know, it's okay, it's not... It's like, it was, it was in, in the, uh, it was still in the instruction manual until I started fussing around with it just now. But yeah, I think, like, the only, like, DC characters I don't have are, well, there's a fun pack for Wonder Woman, I don't have that. And there was a, that aforementioned team pack for the Joker and Harley Quinn, which I also don't have. But I have everything else. So yes, that means that the only villains that they included were Batman villains. Uh, Superman also has a, an alternate face on him, so he's got standard, you know, Superman, and then he's got mad laser vision Superman. I know that didn't really focus much, but I want to keep the focus over here, so that's not a pain in the ass to refocus later. I mean, even though I'm going to be bringing the minifigure up to the camera in just a second. And the rest of these bits are for, like, a space pod that he doesn't need. There's good old Kal-El right there. And, um... Straight his cape there. Hover pod is what it's called. 
At first I thought it was maybe they're trying to make a reference to like the, the pod he came to Earth in as a baby, but usually they're they're not depicted as being like these sort of um, on brand colors. They're just all blue and red. Ooh, stud stacking. I'm not the biggest fan of this. I mean it's it's fine, but like to look at too many studs like this at once because it's just it just increases the chance of something being lost because I'm super paranoid like that. Sorry. And these bits here. They shouldn't take too long. Most of these are actually larger pieces, so this one should be a bit of a quicker one. Bits here. I just really want to get through this because I want to start playing the game again. But again, this is part of the experience. I mean, obviously, if you want to skip the the building part, you can. I'm not your dad. I'm not going to force you to watch videos. That was like this. This. Shoes together, and a smooth disc bit, and then a clip. And that just goes on the back. I, I barely see us using this either. I don't think this really has anything that it really does all that much. Oh, this is one of those situations where the toy tag... Um, is being applied before the uh, the rest of the model is done. So that is fine. So let's say we have a crap ton more pieces to use left game. Are you you sure you want to go about doing it this way? But no, it is, it is, it is quite sure. And... Boosters. Binocular boosters on the back. And... Cool. Alright, so this is going to fit on... like this. Opposite for the other side. Clip, peg thing, binocular boosters, and peg thing, two step block. Piece. Clear wing. And then this goes on this side here. And we only have one stud left over as a uh, an extra piece, which is fine. And that is the hover pod, which is I don't know. I, I like the uh, the I like the um the blue and the red, but it's just like a like a generic spaceship looking thing. That they just made up so that Superman can have something to come with the fun pack. And it's not like they didn't have, like, um... It's not like they didn't have uh, minifigures available separately in, in some ways. They're mostly, like, promotional giveaways. Like, there was, like, a Green Arrow one and a Supergirl one. And uh, they were only given... I don't remember how people got... I think... Green Arrow was given away with through some sort of promotion. Supergirl came with um, PS4 bundles 
um, or console bundles, I should say, around the time 2.0 came out. The next one we got is Doc Brown, so that's the other Back to the Future set. And it's the penultimate set we have for this video to build. Now, of course, there will be more building. Um, not anytime soon, but there will be more building in this Let's Play experience thing. Because we've still got a whole bunch of 2.0 stuff to build when the time comes for that, but this is the last we're going to be building anything on camera for a while. And as you might expect, Doc has a scared face in addition to his normal happy face. I know that was out of focus, but it doesn't really matter. It don't matter. None of this matters. Alright. Old man here, and he also has a little... I guess this is supposed to be the remote control for the DeLorean. But he doesn't come with a DeLorean. He actually comes with uh, the time train from the end of uh, Back to the Future Part 3. And he's also wearing the... Uh, yeah, oddly enough, wearing the uh, the lab coat from the beginning of the first movie, too. But, you know, it is what it is, so... There's good old Doc. And we're ready to build the time train. Let's readjust myself on the traveling time train. I don't know why that traveling is important there in the official name here, but it's, it's just the time train. That's always what I've called it. I'm fairly sure that's always what everyone else has called it. We did not need an extra adjective in the name of this thing. Uh, maybe that's what they called it in like the official... I know that there are official uh, Back to the Future sets now. Outside of the... I think this was like the first time like anything official with Back to the Future happened with LEGO. But I know that they have, at the very least, had a, a full-size, like, not not life-size, but like a like a full-scale DeLorean set that has been long since been released. And they started doing Doctor Who stuff, too. Oh, there's like a TARDIS one, and uh, they have, like, all the companions, I guess. I don't even know. I don't often buy Lego these days. I only have done recently for this project. Where's another one of these kind of stud disc boys? There we go. If everything will just stay together, please. There goes the neighbor's dog again. Good. I keep picking up this thing, but I mean to pick up this one. Doesn't exactly help that all these pieces are black in color. And I can't make them out on the dark table, but it's the same piece. Uh, where did it go? There's another one of these uh, axle pieces. There it is. here, because that's important, I guess. Not sure why the DeLorean didn't fire, then. Well, oh, that's the wrong piece entirely. The bricks over here is getting, like, not covered by things, but, like, obscured by things, from what I can see. Oh, boy. I don't know how long it's going to take me, like, if I keep playing this game. Like, I, I pretty much have this... I don't want to say on priority, but... I'm pretty much at a point now where I gotta... I gotta keep going with it. Because this is taking up a lot of space on the table. And I'm not going to have any room for anything else. Because, like, you know, sometimes if I, if I eat food up in here... This is where my food goes, it's on the table. 
And there I go, missing pieces again. I got forgot to put two studs in here. And that's alright, it's not like I can't move stuff around. Um, usually the uh, the portal isn't this far out, it's actually a little bit further back when not in use. So that's something. But especially when we start getting into 2.0 and we have like whole other set pieces for the portal, I gotta find a place to put those when I'm not using them, let me tell ya. one has similar colors to this too. More of this, please. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, it's fun building things, but when I try to keep myself as, on as much of a time limit as possible, that's the wrong piece. Um, I mean, it's not like a time limit, but, you know, I again, I only have so much film. And I kind of want to get back to the game. was pressed against another piece, and I thought it was part of that piece. Oh, where's the other funnel looking thing? There it is. Okay, studs. Gold stud and a black stud. And that will attach onto these parts here. Very good. Transparent pieces on here for like a, it's a cabin or something. It's another gold stud, right? Yes. Okay. Let's slap on the back. This tiny boy will hook those together. So got slanted pieces. One more detail. stud to go here. So that's at least going to be the start of the smokestack. We've got these parts on like this for some reason. Okay. Um, got a gold stud up here. And more binocular boosters. Make it the front. I honestly don't see much of the use for the train either, because like the only the the main thing that sets the part from a lot of other vehicles um, is also the thing that sets the DeLorean apart from other vehicles, and that's the ability to use the uh, the time travel treadmill things. But um, I'm sure we'll find some use for it. Front and the cow catcher. And that's it for that part. And the wheels, of course. Surprised it took us this long to put the wheels on. They're just kind of like these little plates. And again, it doesn't make sense, much sense for a train to have tires, so. It's like train wheels. And I think that's it. This is the rest of this is all extra stuff. Okay. And yep, that is the time train. A little hard to see because of the dark colors, but it works for what it is. And then we have one last thing. One more thing to finally, just, you know, we're finally done with building for the time being, and on to just 
also for the time being, um, not limiting myself to what I can do in the game. Though I do kind of like the fact that I limited myself uh, on, during the levels and everything, because I, I, I did enjoy seeing... Um, let me straighten this hair, too. I did enjoy seeing how, like, the, the levels were all meant to be done with the, with the, the stuff that they came with. So we got our last bag here, and we're going to just take all the other bags and plop them back into the little drawer. And our last um, set for 1.0 is Naya from Ninjago. I think that's her name is Naya. I got her out of any of the other Ninjago characters because... I don't know anything about Ninjago. I, I, I said that I have cursory knowledge, and um, I know I kind of explained this during the Ninjago level during the story, but um, I got her because she looked like a cool samurai character, and and she looked cooler than the other ninja characters that I didn't care about. Plus, she came with a samurai mech. Not that I'm going to be using the samurai mech that much, I don't think. And, uh, so she has, like, a regular face. And she also has, like, this armor robot-looking face. I think, like, she would meant to keep her, her like, identity secret at first. That's, that's how it comes across to me, is that she was trying to keep her identity secret first. Because she's a girl, and she can't do adventures with all the boys. And it turns out she was, a, she was the samurai all along. And everyone was like, yay! And then she continued having adventures, I'm fairly sure. That's just speculation on my part. I am not an expert on this show because I've never watched it, really. Uh, it has been on in the background when I've been at my friend's house. And that's how I got what little cursory knowledge I have of it. And... We even got to build the helmet. That's cool. whole big mouthpiece on it, too. Put that on the swords as well. And it goes on like this. And here we have, I'm fairly sure her name is Naya. Samurai girl or something. Nah, yeah, that, that's it. That's the name. It just came up on the screen. And the Samurai Mech is literally called just Samurai Mech. I don't know if Samurai Mech is a thing in the show. Uh, I think it's more along the lines of they just wanted a thing to associate with the figure for the game. Um, but I will have a lot more respect for the show if Samurai Mech is actually in the show. Not that it really matters to me one way or the other, because I don't plan on watching it. Quite frankly, I have too much stuff to watch at the, in, at, 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 you know, the, way, the way things are now. Uh, and I'm not really all that interested in watching a Lego-based children's show. I mean, this is coming from a guy who watches children's shows regularly, but... You know, Kamen Rider, and uh, not so much Super Sentai at the moment, because I watch, like, the... I know Kyo Ryuger's almost... or not Kyo Ryuger, Ryu Soldier is almost done. Um, I did not watch Ryu Soldier all the way through, um, because with, uh, longer shows like that, that are weekly, but still have, like, 50 episodes, especially, uh, basically the, um, tokusatsu shows I watch are all like that. Uh, I give them, uh, unless I'm, I'm planning on watching the whole thing, like, there are some, some animes and whatnot that I've watched all the way through that were that long, uh, because, like, I was playing Super Robot Wars or something like that, and I wanted the context... Um, and that's a lot of time I'll never get back, because, as it turns out, Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny are some of the worst schlock I've ever seen, but that's just my opinion. But usually, I'll give it, like, four episodes, and I will stop watching if I do not enjoy it, or at least don't enjoy some aspects of it. Like, like Kamen Rider Zio was not great when it came right down to it, but... 
I stuck with that for the uh, the tribute arcs uh, because there were a lot of those that were really well done. And uh, the only character, the main, the only main character I ended up liking was Waz anyway. And even then, not for any real legitimate character reasons, but more along the lines of I don't know. I kind of enjoyed the memeiness of him, and that's not something that normally happens with me. But I, I enjoyed him, you know, saying rejoice to everything, and that was fun. But all the other characters were dumb. And it was not a great show. But Ryu Soldier, um, I watched the first four episodes of that, and I could not stand it. Um, I think episode four was when they brought the Green and Black Rangers in, and they were already doing the thing that... Like, when the Go-On Wings first showed up in, in uh, what was it, uh, Go-Onger? Um, which is a show that I did like overall. But one of the things that I hate when they do it, when they bring in extra rangers that weren't there from the beginning, and they're like, oh, we've been doing this longer than you, and we're better than you at everything, and we're going to be arrogant butts the entire time. I don't know how much they calmed down with that, but... Uh, episode 4, I couldn't get all the way through. I had to stop. It got that annoying for me. And I'm like, I am... And because the first three episodes weren't great to begin with. It's like, okay. I have all of these characters with no development. Like, I don't know who any of these people are, why I should care. I really like the, the um, sort of Lego-style um, mech concept. But um, it was that wasn't enough to keep me watching the show. I wasn't uh, in it. For, I wasn't even in it for the aesthetic anymore. Oh dear. Oh dear, my controller died. I mean, yes, I did have it on the whole time. One moment, please. I'll get my other controller. All right. Sorry about that. My controller died because it was on for so long. But you know, I need it on so that I can progress through the uh, through the instructions here. But that's fine. I always uh, I usually have like a two controller rotation, um, and like when one dies, then I just start charging the other. I just start charging that, and then just use the other one, which is fully charged. Very rarely do I am I like I'm just not gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and not charge this right now. You got big old swords with extended handles on them too. Like that. Oh, that's not a sword at all. I know what that's for. It's for the same thing that. Um, used for on the uh, mech suit that comes with Cyborg. Basically, it's the stand. And it goes right up in his nether region. I tried putting that on upside down. I'm silly. There we go. That is Samurai Mech. And it's a good thing that we're done now because I just start, I just got the 30 minute warning for the um, the amount of film I have left in the camera. So put this away and um, that's our the remainder of our builds for 1.0 and um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this this video here and um, offload the footage at some point when I decide to edit this. And when we come back, um, we're going to start going back through the story mode missions um, just with what we have here and get all of our collectibles. Again, it's going to be kind of a post-commentary thing because I don't feel like setting up the microphone and all that. So I'm just going to record the footage first and then comment over it later. But, uh, but yeah. I'm really looking forward to this, so I hope you are too. And um, I've been Captain Floofers, and I'll be here next time. Join me, won't you?